Hey guys, what's up? So today I want to talk about challenges of starting your roll off or dumpster company and you know what some of the pitfalls that you're gonna have to starting a company um, or at least the ones I had but I think they're gonna be pretty generic because when you hear what I'm gonna go over you're gonna say yeah it probably makes sense So when you start a company, you need money. <laughs> that's the, probably gonna be the biggest challenge. There's other challenges, but that's gonna be the biggest one. What I did was, is I bought a used truck and put a body on it. And that was the cheapest way that I was able to get into, a, into business. And if you look at my video on how I started the company, I tell you the whole process. I'll try to put a link down to my other video of you know starting a trash company. And I explain what I did and how I did it. But I'll go into detail as far as the, the actual challenges and the money. What you're gonna need to do with that money is you're gonna need to buy insurance, you're gonna need to buy trucks, and you're gonna need possibly employees. Eventually the employees will come after you gain um, you know, enough business. And that's always the big day when you get to hire your first driver. If you're starting a dumpster company, hit like and subscribe. Let's um, engage each other. Let's learn from each other. And I promise you, if you like and subscribe and engage this channel, we'll do videos for you. We will post content that's directly related to making you successful. What I did was, is I bought a used truck, I took the body off of it, and I put a hook lift on it. That's why I'm so um, amped up on hook trucks, because they basically helped me get my business started. It's relatively inexpensive and they're versatile. You can get a, um, a hook truck that only hauls the 16 foot dumpsters, way cheaper than a roll off that you know does the full 22 foot long dumpsters. Money is gonna be a big challenge. Getting insurance is gonna be a big challenge. Getting cheap insurance is gonna be a big challenge. Finding a driver to drive a, a trash truck or a roll off or a hook truck is going to be your biggest challenge there's a lot of drivers out there but finding drivers that are qualified and safe are going to be your biggest challenge so I would not wait till the last minute to find another driver if you need a driver I would definitely recommend planning ahead and doing a lot of interviewing for a driver for the guy that makes you feel comfortable that can you know get on the drug testing and have a clean driving record for three years. But especially when you're new, if you have somebody that has a record, you're not gonna get covered because you don't have the clout of a big policy. As far as money, what you can do is try to find, well, there's one way, which you could always find a buddy to give you money, which if you had that buddy, they probably won't lend it to you. Um, but if you know somebody that you know can lend hard money is what it's called, I kind of akin them to loan sharks. I mean, they're, that's going to be your most expensive way to borrow money. Um, it, it's called hard money. Um, the luck I had was, and the way I was able to when I first started, was I had a basically a line of credit with a small bank. So the manager, a long time ago at a bank that I did business with, he was just starting out and he wrote a bad loan to a lady. I didn't know this at the time, but this was the story that came out of it. He wrote a bad loan to a lady and I, and the lady came up to me and said, hey, I wanna sell my truck, but I owe more than I am, and I'm, I'm gonna let it go to, you know, basically, um, you know, repossession. And it was a nice truck, it was a um, GMC Yukon. She says, can you help me, you know, get out of the, the loan, um, I'm going through a divorce. So I call the guy from the bank, his name is Ray, and he goes, yeah, he goes, that's gonna be my first loan that I ever wrote, that was bad. He goes, I wrote plenty of loans, but this is the first one that's bad. I said, listen, I wanna buy the truck. He said, I'll tell you what, let's, you know, we came to terms on the truck. I said to him, I said, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll buy this truck, but you owe me a favor. And I was half joking, half serious. He goes, are you kidding me? If you could stop me from having a bad, it's called bad paper. If I don't have bad paper, I owe you 
a big favor. He gave me the chalk. We had different terms than what she had. I kind of negotiated the rate down and he made it longer so the payments were cheaper and also came out of it him owing me a favor. I think it was like a five year loan and I paid the truck off in like two years or three years. This was 20 years ago. This wasn't recently. And I said to him, um, sub subsequently, I did probably that same thing, not with bad paper, but I got, you know, subsequently got different loans from him for other items. You know, I bought an older car that, you know, banks didn't want. And he was always my, kind of like my B credit guy. One thing you must do is if you try to um, gain a relationship with a bank, you must be on time with your payments. If not on time, pay it off early. What you wanna do is if you could take a loan, let's say take a three year loan, they put all the interest up front on your loan and your last like, let's say a year of payments is like a dollar towards the interest. So if you could take your loan out and pay it like a year early, that's really good for you to show the bank, hey listen, I don't have a problem paying interest and I pay it off early the manager of the bank will go that extra step in trying to get something approved that may not subsequently be approved if you were just a guy that just came in off the street. So I, I would probably say the biggest hurdle you're gonna have is money. Start a relationship with a small bank and it works. If you do it and you start the relationship and prove to them that, and it could take five years, listen, it may not happen overnight. You may have to work on this for five or six years or three years and I know it sucks and it's not what you wanna hear, but if you don't have the money, the only thing that's gonna get you money is good credit because that's the, that's the cornerstone to getting a loan is your credit. There's more people out there than it was when I did it. There is people that will give you loans on like an older truck, on equipment loans, but the interest rate's gonna be sky high. If you, if you need a truck, you could maybe go to one of those equipment loan people, but it's gonna be like 15% interest and they're gonna kill you. What I would suggest doing is go to those hard people, go to those people with the high interest, but work on the relationship with the bank at the same time. Unless you got excellent credit, don't go to the big banks. Go to a small town bank, start a relationship with one of the managers, and what I had to do actually was follow that manager around. That manager, if he's willing to work with you, that shows that he's willing to work outside the box. If he goes to another bank, follow him to that bank. Follow that manager to wherever he goes and show him, say, hey, listen, I'm committed to you just like you're committed to me. And that will mean a lot to him. Remember that bankers and the smaller companies, they're people. The big banks, you're just a number. So my advice is money is gonna be the biggest problem. Just work that relationship with the smaller bank and you know start that relationship as early as possible because I'm going to tell you something you're going to need that money and you're going to need that you know that credit line or the loan for dumpsters or what have you and you're not going to find it and the only person that's going to find it is the guy that you have that personal relationship with so like I said start that personal relationship early work on it and um, do the best you can to foster that relationship between you and the manager of a bank.